Good afternoon. On this autumn weekend, we welcome one and all for the celebration of the Eucharist here in the community of St. Joseph. Leading us in prayer is Father Mark. My name is Ron Nagy. October is Respect Life Month. As a church, we ponder God's great gifts in the many ways that we are called to protect innocent life, the poor and the vulnerable, all masterpieces of God's creation made in his own image as Pope Francis has reminded us. In today's gospel, Jesus quotes the ancient teaching from the book of Genesis about God's plan for marriage. He upholds the unity of the human family and the equality of all its members. Jesus then illustrates this as he welcomes his children. As we begin our worship, let us raise our voices in praise of God with the hymn, All Creatures of Our God and King, found in your program. But first, let us greet each other as brothers and sisters in the Lord.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of a Virgin. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Christ, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a suitable partner for him. So the Lord formed out of the ground various wild animals and various birds of the air, and he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called each of them would be its name. The man gave names to all the cattle, all of the birds of the air, and all of the wild animals, but none proved to be a suitable partner for the man. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man, and while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. Then the Lord God built up into a woman the rib that he had taken from the man. When he brought her to the man, the man said, this one at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of her man, this one has been taken. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife and the two become one flesh. 
the word of the Lord. reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, he for a little while was made lower than the angels, that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he for whom and through whom all things exist in bringing many children to glory should make the leader to their salvation perfect through suffering. He who consecrates and those who are being consecrated all have one origin. Therefore, he is not ashamed to be called them brothers. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. The Pharisees approached Jesus and asked, Is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? They were testing him. He said to them in reply, What did Moses command you? They replied, Moses permitted a husband to write a bill of divorce and dismiss her. But Jesus told them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. In the house, the disciples again questioned Jesus about this. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And people were bringing children to him that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he became indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not prevent them, for the kingdom of God belongs to those to such as these. Amen, I say to you, whoever does not accept the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it. Then he embraced them and blessed them, placing his hands on them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you. So how do I preach on the sanctity of marriage? How do I preach about God creating us male and female? How do I preach on these things when the world tells us what we believe is wrong? The Archbishop of New York, Cardinal Timothy Dolan, he has a book called Priests for the Third Millennium. I read it while I was in seminary, and in the beginning of the book, Cardinal Dolan recounts this story of a priest or bishop, I can't remember what he was, who was being verbally attacked regarding the faith. People were telling this priest or bishop that the church has lost, that there is nothing more for the church to give the world. The people challenged this priest or bishop to, and asked his response to their claims. The priest replied that the church has this to give. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and he goes on to recite the entire creed. My brothers and sisters, this is what the church has to give. The truth. The truth, no matter what the world tells us and no matter the names that they call us. Because the truth is what sets us free. We are called to hold on to the truth that God created us male and female and that marriage is between one man and one woman. Now, I am sensitive to the reality that Many of us know someone in our family or our other circles who do not believe what we believe regarding marriage or that God created us male and female. But we are called to love, love our family and friends who may disagree with what we believe. We can love and disagree at the same time. Unfortunately, society tells us that to love means to accept and encourage people on their path. Standing up against this tidal wave that we need to turn away from our faith, our beliefs, to love will be one of the most difficult things we ever do. Impossible, really, if we don't do it without God. I want you, I want to encourage all of you to keep loving like Jesus is loving us and everyone else. 
the sanctity of marriage doesn't just start at marriage, but also goes before that for those that are also dating. So 90% of couples, from my experience, personal experience, in marriage prep are already living together. Why is this the case? Part of it is that it's what everyone else is doing. So it's easy to do what everyone else is doing, and it's so widely accepted as okay. Part of the reasons given, it's to save money. Part of it is to say, we need to see how we get along. These are just some of the reasons. Doesn't mean they're good, but they are the reasons given. When I work with couples for marriage prep, I challenge them to change. I challenge them to sacrifice. I challenge them to think about what will be different on the day of your marriage. And I have been in my priesthood edified by some couples who took up the challenge and made real changes as they grew closer to their wedding day. The main goal of marriage is for the spouses to get each other to heaven. If you are dating or are looking to date, start that now. Yes, it may not work out with the person you are currently dating or will date, but there is something to be proud of to know that you did your best to lead the other towards a heavenly goal and not away from it. For those that are already married, are you trying to lead your spouse to heaven? Objectifying your spouse, belittling your spouse, complaining about your spouse to others, not praying with your spouse, not being a good example to your kids are just some of the ways you're not fulfilling that promise to lead your spouse to heaven. There is this phrase or this thought out there, I know that some of you have probably heard it, it's that marriage for husband and wife is 50-50. Is well, no. Marriage is 100-100. Both husband and wife need to be all in. And all in with Jesus. All in with Jesus and all in with each other. Swallow that pride and ask for forgiveness. Say that you were wrong. Try to understand where your spouse is coming from. Listen to your spouse. And don't try to just fix it right away. So yes, it is tough to preach on the sanctity and merit of marriage and that God made us male and female, but it is worth preaching on. It is worth it because the truth of Jesus Christ is worth it, and all of us need to be challenged and to take up that challenge that Jesus gives us. By ourselves, it's impossible, but with God, mountains can be moved. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. True God, true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial, the Father, through Him, for us and for our salvation. He came down to heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified upon his pilot. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Lord, the Giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is the Father and the Son is His glory and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic Church. 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection and the life of the world to come. Let's now make our prayers, our petitions known to our Heavenly Father. Let us pray for the church. God, you bind the church to yourself as your faithful bride. Help us grow in love, mercy, in good times and in bad, in joy and in sorrow. We pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for peace. Lord of every land and nation, help restore our world according to your original plan. Bring peace to the nation, to our families and our homes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Let us pray for those who have been affected by the storms. Father of the human family, bring comfort and healing to those suffering from the recent hurricanes and floods. May we respond to their needs with our prayers and our resources. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Let us pray for the respect for human life. Father of the human family, You fashion in us your image and likeness. Help us to cherish the gift of life and protect the unborn, the elderly, and all the vulnerable in our midst. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for marriage and family. God, you call us into relationship and renew us each day in your love. Be the strength and the hope for all married people and their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Let us pray for the sick and the elderly infirm. Jesus, anointed one of God, you bring healing to the lowly. Give health and strength to our brothers and sisters. Evan Ridley, Martha Klingler, and for those anointed with the sacrament of the sick this weekend, and all who have asked for our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Let us remember the dead. Risen one, bring the beloved to glory, especially Sharon Lee, Joan Francisco, Dolores Zimmer, and Ricardo Yozan. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for our personal needs in a moment of silence. O Lord, we pray for the glory of the autumn season and all creation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we We make all these prayers to our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is to the right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raise up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal Mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection.
Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassionate, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. May this mingle in the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ bring your life to us receive it. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Tomorrow, our annual life change will be held from 1.30 until 3 p.m. along M24 in front of the church. All are welcome to join in this event. Signs will be provided. Also, Sunday afternoon, the blessing of pets will take place on the front lawn at 3.30 p.m. Please see the bulletin or our website for upcoming opportunities, including a public square rosary rally to honor Our Lady of Fatima on Saturday, October 12th at 12 noon at the Lake Orion Veterans Memorial and there will be chairs. Also, there is a great need for volunteer catechists to help guide our preschool and kindergarten classes in their faith journey. If you feel called to share Christ's love with our youngest learners, please contact our religious education office. And lastly, those who would like to support the Hurricane Helen relief efforts with a donation will find Catholic Charities envelopes at the church doorways, and at the welcome desk. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.